Good evening, chess friends. This is International Master Valero Liwop, and welcome to today's lecture on YouTube. Hope you can hear me all right, and the sound is working as well for you as it's working for me. So the topic of today's lecture is really interesting. Today what we're going to be talking about is how to play the French defense. Now, how many of you have actually wondered this opening, one of the most interesting counterattacking openings in chess. How do we make it better? And the truth is that while it's definitely a little complex to play the French, there's no doubt about that, there are ideas that can help you to really master this opening pretty well. And today, I would like to give you some of those ideas with a little bit of my secrets on the key plans of playing this magnificent opening. Before that, I do want to advise you to actually be careful about the French because the French is not as easy opening. Okay, so it's not the easiest opening to play. So don't expect the super secret easy opening. So let's go, let's get started. Now, first of all, what is this opening all about? So if white plays e4 and essentially black plays e6, should white choose to do d4, black can do d5. Now the interesting thing here is that as soon as d5 is played, we realize the main goal of black. And what is the black main goal of this system? Well, to be entirely honest, it is incredibly simple. Black wants to challenge the white center and make sure that white loses his support over the middle. It is really all about that. Challenge the center and make sure that he loses the support. Is it possible to do this that so well? I mean, yes, it is. First thing that we'd like to do is to remember that uh, if if the d5 happens, now a lot of people don't know what to do in their weeks change. Now, I, I, you have no idea how many times I've actually heard, I don't know what to do when people do the trade. Okay, so I've heard that an infinite amount of times. I have no idea what to do when people do the trade. So, what do you do when people trade off? When people do the trade, so to speak, first thing you want to do is recapture. Make it easy. So the recapture first. If white does go with a move like bishop to the d3, what you want to do is to use the fact that now the light square bishop is open. And so thereby, white's tactics do not work all this well. So for instance, after we play with bishop to the d6, in case white does knight f3, you can play bishop g4. If I keep, I'm got, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open up the book here so that you could see. This is the live book based on the um, not so much the main theory, but amount of games and the statistics as well as the rating. This will make it easier for you to see what's the newest trend while I'm explaining the lines. Uh, essentially, being that after the exchange. Many people do not go for the exchange. You can see that as opposed to the other variations, it's the least popular. But ultimately what's happening is that black is having a great development. So you can play knight f6 or bishop d6. That's my favorite, my more preferable move. And and why does two ways to go? I mean, either he can give up on his hope to fight for advantage by playing bishop to the d3, or he can try to do something by going with an immediate c4. Now let's explore both of these possibilities. They go bishop d3. Now, my personal favorite is knight e7. I love doing that. White will castle, then black can do knight bc6, c3 usually, and then bishop g4. Now, uh, this is a great line because it gives you the choice to castle short and go into equality, or actually consider that's my favorite, to castle long. Castling long is fantastic because while the white attack may work on the queen side, the black plan on the king side is going to be faster. You can see the black already has some pieces there while white is missing 
forces and thereby opportunities. It is important to say that because then we have, okay, so you cannot do this because the double of the doubling of the pawns. And so you could see the issues are plenty. Yes, that, that's right. There are plenty of issues that are going to come out against the white king side. This is what we're actually looking for right this moment. All right. Now, going back, back, back to an earlier stage. You see, just remember the whole idea of what Black wants to do in French, which is counter the center and provide the easy development for his pieces. Now, what if white does, let's suppose, maybe knight of three, bishop to the d6, and c4. In that case, I recommend that you do not take. Wait until white actually develops his own knight, and then we can think of the opportunity to exchange and, and get the position open quickly. That's what we're looking for. So after the move of knight f6, white would do knight c3. We could cast a short. Black, white can do c6 to the b. Or maybe he can just do bishop to the d3 in this position. It doesn't matter. One, one of the other, one or the other. CDXD is what people will do most times in order to really give themselves the ability to open and uh, you know, like just challenge or attack in one way or another. This, this is what they will do, most, like, most likely. Which is okay. This is what we want. What you really want is for him to play exactly like that. Why? Because when they do play exactly like that, you will take advantage and you're going to develop extremely well by playing that knight onto the d7 square. It is perfect. Okay, so what is it all about? Well, the d5 pawn looks like a very dangerous pawn, which you just lost. But don't worry. Don't you worry. We attack it. And shortly after, we take it back. Knight b takes the d5. So we do it this way, and we have everything that you would like to do. A good pawn to take, an easy way to simplify, and the chance to think about bishop f5, rook d8, or even rook e8, so that with this knight on the d5 and with each of the other pieces, we could apply a very strong challenge or pressure against white's position. It is not easy, but it's important that we do it just like that. So French is really a good counter-attacking opening when you think of it. And most of the times, we get an incredibly good activity that is in line with the goal, the main goal of black, and the further possibility to attack and take advantage of the position against white's, white's, white's king. All right. What other versions of plan white can choose in between? Okay, but they're, because there are different ways to go. The other version of playing, in my opinion, is if white picks up to play, let's suppose, a um, different move. Maybe, just maybe, I'm saying, an idea of playing knight c, no, so going back, sorry, knight c3. This is the main line we're actually streaming here, the very main variation. When, when people do it like this, you got to know. Uh, you know, it's it's main line for a reason. It has a specific, you know, like set. What is the main reason for him to play this? Forces to, or provoke us to exchange, which will give White a fantastic command over the center, or just back up, support, and maintain his middle. There are a few ways to fight this. One is knight of six making him to choose and push the pawn, after which, ultimately, the main idea of black is going to be to counter white center. c5, knight c6, here. And then I want you to see the structure. Every opening is learned not so much by the moves that determine it, but by the formation created. The whole idea of black's formation is to challenge the d4 and b2. And because of that, there will be plenty of great moves that black could manage with it. He can do a6, he can do b5, he can do bishop takes the c5, and then he can continue going up with each piece. Like the two knights, the bishop that's going to go from behind, and the fact that it's all looking great. Does it look perfect? No, it does not. But it looks 
good. It does. I can. One of the things that I can guarantee you about a position just like this is how easy you can make it work, how easy it is going to be for you, for the pieces to really step up. Uh, and, you know, like we could have that opportunity to play with the move. Bishop to the b7, or rook to the c8 in this moment, and the move of queen to b6. It is a wonderful idea simply because of the resource, simply because of the way to keep it up. It's good, steady, it's powerful. And it's exactly what we want to do. In a very, very good, at least in my opinion, in a very good order of just uh, setting every piece in line with the plan. Okay, so that's that's what basically we're looking for, and what this whole sequence is about. Just not a not a whole lot of you know different things going on, but you know this is what we're looking to do. What else is out there? I mean, what else can possibly happen? Okay, let's go back. I mean, just going right back, 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 back to the point. Queen d2, b5 is obviously great. So sometimes, excuse me, white can play bishop g5. Okay, it's not a bad move. It's okay as a candidate. When they do this, it's tricky. And the reason why is because, well, white actually has a pretty strong idea. He wants to pin us down make us to worry about the night and everything that's going to happen because of it. So what do we do? First, you can take an e4, which is I don't recommend. The pawn structure determines, it's like the, the foundations of a building. Okay, It determines how that building is going to behave. Like, is it, is it going to stand for long? Is it going to be more expensive because of the view? Is it going to be better than the others? or it is just going to be bad. So that is very, very important. So what do we do when we get into a position just like this? This is a really interesting question. Very, very intriguing concept. Well, my basic suggestion, okay, is let's think of a move of the bishop g5 that will help us to counterattack. Move of bishop to the b4 does that perfectly. At least in my opinion, it's a place that it does that perfectly. It is not about the bishop. Okay, it's a good bishop, apparently. But it is not so much about the bishop as it is about the pressure we create over the c3, over the e4, over the white king, and everything else. Now, let's suppose that white continues with the move of e5 in this kind of position. So he's really up for the attack or advance, whatever. So what do we do? h6. Remember the goal of this opening. The goal of this opening is never to make big tactical sequences happen. You may think this is the goal. The truth is it's not, okay? It is not at all the goal. The goal of this opening always happens to be let's make the actual counterattack and do it faster. So, like, it's not about defending. It's not about anything else. It's about speed, you know, continuity, and threats. So what's going on now? And just obviously, this is a pretty strong uh, idea. Um, well, actually, that's interesting because then after h6, I think white needs to play bishop down to the d2. And then we're doing bishop takes the c3, b takes the c3, and knight e4 as a candidate. Queen g4. And then the moment white is actually play, just plays the move queen to the g4, what we're going to go for is g6. Solidify the position and keep it all together. Oh, yeah. This is a great move, by the way, in my opinion. Simple. Nice. He's going to try to play bishop to the d3. Of course he will, which is the kind of situation in which we'll play knight takes d2, king takes to the d2, and pawn up to c5. And it is great. I want to say that it is perfect, but it is really good to have. C5. 
far uh, d4 is under a threat most of white's other pieces are kind of back and behind and then if he plays with knight f3 we can do bishop to d7 uh, he can play h4 if he's looking to do something h4 is related to the h5 idea so he's looking for an advance or an attack or whatever you call it it's all right then we do queen e7 most likely just you know, like very quickly going up reaching out for knight c6 towards the long side castles maybe rook to c8 pretty good and you know the the whole thing is it makes sense because we don't have to be thinking so deeply just like a couple little moves to reach out for the position we're looking if you play queen f6 queen takes f8 except c4 black succeeds it is not about anything big it's about a couple little tactical moves force him down and then black can even castle short sorry castle long i mean it's great so Let's get down to the back, 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 back to an earlier stage. This is really interesting. And see what really caused all this. Counterattack. See, when you keep in mind what the opening is really all about, you can redefine the strategy and you can adjust the strategy just as easily depending on how your opponent plays it out. It is incredibly important that you do so and it's incredibly important that you do this well that is what the bishop b4 variation does now let's suppose people will do and you want to do something else like bishop b4 okay now i talk a lot about theory all right i, I know and i get it but it is important to talk about theory because theory essentially brings you the key. So the most important thing about theory is the pressure, the challenges. Now we have the bishop b4, which sets up the knight under attack on the c3. So let's see. What's going to happen after bishop to the b4? Interesting question. Right after that, white has to do the move of pawn up to the e5. Okay, so he does that, let's say. And then after the move of pawn up to the e5, we do c5 in this moment. We attack him practically immediate. This is so powerful as an idea. It's, it's a really great candidate. Think about this. If you want to counter the opponent in French defense, what better possibility to do or follow up with than attacking the center? Because it is all about his center. Everything he is looking for is based on the idea to stay strong in the middle. So without that, he's not going to have really a whole lot to do. That is why you care about the middle in this case. So it's a very interesting chance, our ability to uh, pre pressurize and challenge against the center quick. Okay, so basically that's the idea. Now, what are White's options? Okay, he's going to have obviously a little bit to worry about that. And maybe he can play a3, uh, but it's okay because then we can have bishop takes the c, b takes the c. And I'm going to give you an opportunity now to think a little bit of a moment. What would you do? So, what should Black try to play in this position? Do you have any? Do you guys have any ideas? All right, so what do we do now? Remember, what we need to do is to finish up with the development. Finish up with the development. But don't just develop generally. The worst thing to do is to develop general because general development always leads to trouble. You don't want that. You don't need that. What you need, however, is something that's a little more effective, a little more threatening or more useful does anybody have a suggestion on where black should go just take a second and think about that very carefully this is big now we're looking for some we're searching for something really important really big okay here's the idea in order to be most successful in order to be most successful the really huge plan in such a position must happen to be 
Don't forget that, please. Now E7. You cannot succeed unless you actually make sure that you finish up with the development of your pieces. You cannot succeed unless you do that, especially in the French defense where we're doing it all from behind. That means you don't have the backup. Okay, you do not have the, the backup. You've got to start from scratch and set it up until you get the winning position. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to set up the knight on the e7, very importantly. Okay, white will play queen to the g4. And essentially, we're just going to castle short. So we set up that knight, set up the king to castle, and we have it ready. So what's going to happen now? Of course, that's the biggest question. White cannot do bishop to the h5 because of the normal like attacking and everything. So he's going to do this. And then as he goes in this way, very important thing to remember. As he goes with a move like bishop to the a3, we're going to play knight b to c6. So we are bringing it together. We have our pieces up. We're ready. And we have everything together. So, what to do now? Okay, this is necessary to remember. When white starts advancing against you, you have no choice but to oppose his queen and the bishop with the move of f5. That is the secret. Okay. So how do we how, how does how do what do we what do we do after that? After f5, most likely, I think, what white is going to do is to play with the move of queen to the h5. And then we're just going to have the ability to play bishop to the d7. And actually that is what is so much necessary. Now after that move with bishop to the d7. Uh, okay, so he's got a, obviously a little bit of a problem. Let's suppose that he'd cast a short, and then we can do c4, forcing his bishop to go back. So we can do a move like pawn up to the b5. Little by little, advancing, growing in, you know, it's this in space and in possibilities is going to be what matters most in such a position. Little by little. But you have to remember that building up is about this. Setting your pieces together, moving them stronger or to be a little bit more advanced or concentrated. And that's how it actually works out so well. This is the reason why it works out so well. So we have the b5, we got the control, we have the ability to step up. And so what is he going to do? I mean, given the problems. If maybe white cannot do anything, he has to take that pawn. It's only hope is to exchange on Passan. So he takes on Passan, as he do as he'll do right here. And then after he the take of an Ampassan, we do rook takes f6. Bishop to the g5. Okay, it's very important. And then after the move of rook to the g5 has happened, we can do rook f7. Now I want you to take a look at this. This looks extremely scary. When somebody's looking at this now, he's going to say, oh, Valeri, come on. Hey, I don't want to play this. This is just like not a very good position. I want something that's simpler, that's easier, that's just a little more like, you know, shaken up. True. You know, you want that. I want that. It's not a bad idea to have that. But, but, here is the thing. Having a nice shaken position is going to put you in trouble with black. Now, what you want to do is to keep the flexibility, but also be stable. Look at this. If white plays queen h4, now we can play h6. Drive the white bishop right down, which is a really key move, in my opinion. And then once we've done it, it's a very interesting dance move. So now he's got to go back with the bishop, possibly to you know d2. Maybe we could say the d2. And then black can do move of pawn to c4. Very interesting candidate. It's forcing his bishop to basically retreat. He's got to go right down to the e2. And then after he goes right down to e2, we can play with, uh, I don't know, like there are different moves, but I would actually I would personally think about a move like queen to c7. Short castles, knight f5. And it is a wonderful idea. It's really good.
drive the opponent's bishop and like a queen, I mean, in this case, make him go away. He's got to go to the h5. That's an excellent thing because we can develop now our bishop to our own bishop down to d7. It is easy. You know, I want to say that it is really easy when you know the right beats as to where your pieces are supposed to go, what you what they can do. The rook is going to now go down to the f8 square and and everything. It is great. It is really really simple. And so once we have that move of uh, bishop to the d7, which is great, he has a problem. He's got to play with g4, and then we can do knight in the d6. That knight is going there. You can see that this is just more of, a, of an expressive variation. This is not the best way on how white can play. The theory suggests a white is supposed to even take on e7. But keep in mind, a lot of your opponents are not going to know the theory. They're not going to know what they're supposed to do in such a position. So this is why I was saying that it matters. You know, This is a position in which things matter. Queen h4, supposedly his move to you know, play. But then we can do g6. And we're good. He has to castle. And then with the castling in line, I think it's a great move for black to play c4, driving the white light screw bishop out of the way. He white would have to play bishop to the e2 in this moment. And then after bishop e2, black could do bishop d7. Rook f e1, queen f8. The queen is great. It's going down to the g7 right now. We have nothing to worry about as there is really no tactics. And should white play with bishop d1, I think this is a good time for us to play rook a8. Well, look at the white bishop. Just look at it. Forget about the rest. Look at white's bishop. It is being the worst post, the worst placed piece that he's got. I mean, literally the worst place piece. No other piece has the ability to go out, and everything else just feels completely out of place in any way. The bishop is bad, the rest of his forces are horrible, and uh, that's it, really. just There is a lot of horrifying things happening and taking place around here. That is what you need. So, of course, uh, there is more, but this is basically how it's supposed to happen. If he tries knight to the e5, then most likely we can play with knight takes to the e5, rook takes to the e5, um, maybe rook f7. We counter the center, we forced him or we provoked him to lock it up, and then as he had to lock it up, we just have king g7 coming. We have the f line under pressure, and then we've got the ability to think of bishop a4. So... It's all there for black. All the pieces are developed. All the pressure seems good. And it's it's nice. Really, I just want to say that. It's really, really nice to have. So those are some of my major thoughts as to like you know how this uh, fringe defense, and especially that line, can be played by black. Now, I want to talk about uh, one more line so that you don't get confused. And we're going to focus on questions and things about you that you want to know about French. So let's first let's first talk about what's going to happen in case white does knight d2. Okay, knight d2. This is tricky. Very tricky. Why? Because when white plays with knight up there, he's got just one thing in mind, which is let's support the pawn and keep it together. It's not bad necessarily. But what you've got to consider doing is play with knight f6, first of all. That's my suggestion. And then when white plays with e5, perhaps we could do knight d7. Now, once again, I do not recommend taking e4. Now, some grandmasters are going to be against me by saying, oh, you can take the e4 and you can do this and that and that and that. And yeah, probably. However, we do not want to do that. The reason why we do not want to do that is because what we want to do is to focus along the idea of the center. Center is where we're going, and we'd like to play there. So after that, White can play with the move of bishop to the d3. I think it's going to be good for him. Then we play c5 in this position, very interestingly. c3 is where White's supposed to go, I think, for him. Then we do knight to the c6. This is the way to play it. Knight c6 in order to pressure, I pressurize against the opponent's d4. Very good candidate. 
Uh, he's going to have an issue now with this. I mean, obviously, for for an apparent reason, the center is being like seriously injured, you know, attacked and challenged. Supposedly, White will do knight e2 in this moment, and then when he does, when he does, we're ready. You can play c takes d, c takes d, f6. F6 is a key move. Now, it's a tricky move. It's tricky. You want to know that. It's not a move. You can just say, oh, hey, I can attack him like that. Yeah, no. It's tricky. The reason why that works right here is because we are going to exchange the white center pawn. And because he's got no development to pose any significant difficulties to our position. Because he's got no development or a backup, the move works like a charm. And it is steady. It's strong. It's almost as valuable and as powerful as you can imagine it. So you can take a look at this. It's really interesting. Knight takes f6. Supposedly, white will do uh, a move like, say, short castles. Then we can play bishop to the d6. It's wonderful. The idea of the pieces coming together and preparing ourselves for the, for the castling is great. What about white? Well, one thing he can try is to play with knight f3. But then if he does a move like knight f3 here, we're just going to play with short castles, bishop f4, trade, takes, and knight e4. So you can see with through all these lines that black is having, he's setting up a pretty good counterattack. White can try to defend that knight. By the way, if he does not get to defend that knight, which could be the case, if he does not get to defend the knight, we are going to have the move of rook takes f3 as a big, huge break. G takes f3 and knight g5. An attacking point at f3. The opportunity for the queen to step forth to f6 and realize all sorts of attacks. Now you can say white is winning materially, so that's more important. Is it? I mean, yes, it is more important in general, but how helpful it is right now. It does not work well. Here, White can do a move like King H1 in this type of position. And then the moment he plays the move like King H1, it is exactly where Black would break. And I'm talking about break through the position. There is the move of E5 that he can do. White can capture very quickly. And then Black is just going to play with the move of Knight takes F3. It is an essential move that almost immediately takes down, tears down the position of white. We're going to have the queen and h4 coming down in, in no time. And we're going to have pretty much every other piece of white just being completely down backsided and, you know, uh, behind. This is what you want to do. Really, I mean it. Like, this is how you do it. You get the pieces right, you set them together, and you make them work. And so they do work. This is terrific. White's position is very difficult now. I mean, he can do bishop takes h7. He can try complications. But truth is, uh, you know, black always gets this amazing compensation. And, and, and you know, in the end, this, this could be even a bit of a problem for white, really, with our queen. Um, so you see why he is going to try anything to, preve to prevent that by simply keeping his knight on the line and holding his position together. Okay, so he's going to try that. However, what is so important in this moment, what is so necessary, is that black would do, and he can do different things, but what I suggest that he gets to do here is the move of, um, it's a big move actually, yet it is knight g5. Knight to g5, quickly and effectively. Knight takes the g5, and then there is the move of Queen takes the g5, so we can have the the actual attack going against the opponent. You know, you can have a threatening opportunity the, against the opponent. So this is what you need to be con considering. And uh, you know, like actually, this is the, the plan. It's always the major plan you'd like to have. So, uh, so that this is how it works. Uh, in in fact, after continuing with the move of Queen takes the g, White plays knight e2. 
which is like queen to the f6. And uh, so that is a great idea. So it's just like in case of queen f6, let's say white plays queen f3, bishop d7. The development is always pretty. And uh, it's pretty e efficient. Like, you know, we get, get the rook coming on the e8 in this case very easily. And no chances for white. I mean, again, white's got plenty of possibilities. It's not a bad game for him. But, you know, you got to tie because white has no threat in this type of position. So this is very, very important. Knight to c6, then white is, uh, you know, just um, uh, playing a move of pawn up to the a3. And, uh, of course, then after continuing with the move of rook to the c8, pawn up to the, uh, pawn up to the b4. And, um, okay, so that actually is a very interesting thing. And black can play with the move of... Um, so just after continuing with the move of knight a7, case white plays knight in the c3 uh, there. And uh, yeah, so that is what we're looking for. Yep. Okay, so just basically what we need to do in this type of position is, uh, right, well, we just go for knight a7. In case white plays for this, maybe you can play for rook to the c7. Maybe you can play for rook e8 if we'd like to do it this way. It is excellent. It's going to take a little bit of time, but it is a beautiful setup, and uh, it's great. So that's all I'd like to mention in terms of principles and ideas and that, that you can keep in mind uh, anything. So it's great. So this is a, just a, a valuable idea, very important thing, and this is a, good, a, a brilliant concept. Okay. And anyway, um, so I'm glad that we got to talk about these. So what are key questions? I'd like to give you the opportunity to, uh, like, ask me any actual questions about this. So please do jump with your question. I'd be very glad to have a look at it and give you my feedback or recommendation. Now, one of you asked, why c d was played? Why not knight if? Because it fixed the pawn weakness. It fixed the weakness that he had to worry about. That was the d4. That is exactly why we do this move early on, fixing the weakness, looking at that, and then you know creating pressure. One of you asked, um, okay, so this is basically what you would like to uh, to do. So now, in any way, um, this is one of the little things. Now, one of the other things that I wanted to recommend is if you get a chance, take a look, at, like check iChess is offering an incredible course in the French and others, just so that you know. It is about the, uh, you know, like, it's from my, from my course on ideas behind the openings. And it is all about how openings lead to the middle game. And you might actually want to take a look at that. It's offered at an incredible discount. So you might want to really review it. It has a lot, like more than 20 hours or even more, I think, of ideas at an incredible price. And it covers French and many other openings that you can use to build a fantastic repertoire. What I often try to do is not to show theory, but to show what really makes it easier for you to remember and follow through when it comes to theory. And so that is what you're actually looking for in most times, in most situations. So anyway, let's talk about Another important idea. I mean, this is this is good so far in terms of uh, like what openings, uh, what what French is as an opening line. But what else is French basically? What what else we could learn or do when we're applying to French? Well, there are a couple of things. Okay, the first thing you want to remember when it comes down to the French is go back, okay, and see what people can do differently, because people often do not follow the theory, you know, of this of this kind of variation. So they don't follow the actual theory. They play it a little bit differently. So going back, okay, here we go. All right. So if white can play, or if he gets to advance, as a matter of fact, with the move of e4, okay, now... Essentially, what we could consider doing is, after that move, basically black e6, white can play queen e2. It's a slightly different type of move in this type of position. So what is going on in here? If white played with the move of, uh, see, like queen e2, 
how do we advance? What to do in this type of position here? It's pretty interesting to talk about. Hmm. Yes. Well, actually, what is so necessary is that we go for a move of C5. Okay. So this is very, very important. What you would like to do is to play with the move of C5 because C5 provides you with the D4 command. And you got to understand, it's always about the center. That key guideline is what's really going to make it so easy for you to stay stronger or command the middle. Actually, after the D3, pawn up to the G6. Knight C3, bishop G7, G3, D6. Bishop to G2, knight G7 in this type of position. And it is wonderful, of course. Then in case white gets the castle, we can also do a castling on the short side area. And uh, of course, so what you could do in this type of position is to play bishop D2, rook to the B5, rook B8. So this is really, really important. The middle is now occupied. The goal has been achieved. And the possibility to advance further is just what we need in order to get this going. Now, one of you asked, in the last variation that you showed, is there any reason for why to play knight e2 as opposed to knight f3? OK, thank you for that question. This is important. I guess you're talking about the knight d2 here. Yes. If he plays knight f3, that will basically make it impossible for him to protect the d4 pawn. So ultimately, that means he'd have to exchange it or sacrifice it. Either way, his center is going to collapse or he's going to lose because of the f2 and everything. It's it's Without the center, it's very difficult. We can have f6 and all. Um, so that's why he plays knight e2 in order to provide f3 for the other knight and thereby have a little more secure center. Now, another one, he said, any tips on how to play this d4 versus e6, d5, how to add pressure on the knight to the d2, line to d4, or how to time e5. Are you asking for white or for black? I didn't, I, I kind of got a little confused. So please let me know if you're asking for white or for black. Now, one of you said, would you recommend French defense over Sicilian? It's like to say, would you recommend positional play over tactical? It's impossible to recommend one over the other. It really depends on many things. And most importantly, it depends on your preference. You know, if you like Sicilian, you're likely want to have a little more, you know, like attacking tactical positions. French is not that tactical, even though it looks complex. It's more positional. You know, you have to stay crammed for a while while you're building up your play. but it is worth following, you know, because it gives you that stability that in many other openings can't you can't do. So, what is my opinion of French Rubinstein? Well, I showed the Rubinstein just a moment ago. Um, you know, I think it is good. It's a major line. So, for the black, so you're asking for black. Any tips on how to play this d4 versus e6 d5 structure? How to add pressure in the knight in the knight d2 to d4 line? Um, I don't understand the question. Then you have to paraphrase your question. I, I don't get it. So please do ask the question a little more clearly so I can answer it. In any way, another line that people do sometimes get to play with is bishop to the d3. And that's fine. The provocation is to play d dx to d. But you don't have to, you don't have, do have to understand, though, that if this line takes place, if white plays bishop f3, you can counter his center quickly. If you have that type of dynamic opportunity to attack his middle in no time, you don't have to worry about anything. Now c5, knight e2, knight to the c6, and we can take it and control over it. Now one of you asked, what should I play against King Sinan? That's a diff different topic. But if you like, you can send me some of your games through my website, which is basically tigerlilith.com. And I'll be very glad to give you my input on what line you can choose in particular, your own style. Similar to that, if you have any questions about your own repertoire, you can always message me. And I'll be glad to give you some suggestions on how to handle the openings better. So don't forget to check the uh, fantastic, uh, like, six, 50 to 60%. I'm not sure how much it is, but it's a great discount on my Ideas behind the opening scores for iChess. Do take a look at it. I think it's a great 
It's a great course. You can learn a whole lot from it. So check it out. I'm going to put a link right on the chat, and you can also take a look at the link uh, behind the be, be, behind the video. It is a great it is a great course, and there is a lot to learn with from from this. So do not forget to check it out. So, uh, in fact, uh, that is my recommendation. Thank you so much. And I really look forward to discussing uh, everything with you next Saturday. So do not forget to tune in. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great weekend.